I'm Eric Russell. I am out and about at the Mid-Atlantic premiere of Buyer and Seller with Dan Simo and Luke Newsom. This amazing show here at Triangle Player. I, I congratulations. This is this. Oh my God. <laughs> so just a few notes that I made about this amazing show. It is a warm, witty, charming evening with a good friend where you're enjoying a cup of coffee and hearing about the day they were having. This is the most amazing experience I've had in theater in a long time. So just wow. phenomenal. Very cool. So if folks don't know what buyer and seller is about, the basic premise is this out-of-work actor gets a job working in Barbara's basement. Mm -hmm. And kind of take it from there. Explain what kind of happens in this fantasy world of Barbara based on... Well, not to give away too much, it, it, the, the premise of the show is um, Alex is a struggling actor in L.A. who gets this weird, wacky, zany job working in the real-life mall of Barbara Streisand's basement. The rest is entirely fake. It's completely fictional, written by the brilliant playwright Jonathan Tallinn. Yeah, because this thing was done and it's just received so much awards. It, it's a fresh new piece. I mean, we've, we've seen some other shows that take place in people's homes, but this one really has this fresh look. And it kind of struck me because it's based upon this book that she wrote. Mm -hmm. My Passion for Design <laughs> by Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. And we see so many celebrities with their coffee table book, which reminded me of something I actually posted this morning because it, it's October and it's kind of Adam's family Thing. And I thought about stuff I learned from the Adams Family and stuff. And one of the things I thought about was when you said this, you gave this book was, books you keep on your shelves have the meaning that you ascribe them. Which thought about something you had said earlier in the show about aspirational mm -hmm. things that, that inspire us. So I was thinking, every year I buy myself a new coffee table book. And this year I bought He Man, the Masters of the Universe coffee table book. Because you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm that gay. <laughs> What is a, what's a coffee table book that you have? Do you have a coffee table book? Oh my book? gosh, right now I don't. The closest coffee table book I have would be My Passion for Design, I yeah, guess. That's your book. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I've got right now. Yeah. Okay, how about you? Um, I forget who it's by, but it's this Broadway meets Hollywood kind of thing. It's like the, the marriage of the Broadway musical to the, the talkies, the the films of like the 1920s. Why'd you pick that one? I got it as a Christmas gift. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've just been thinking, this whole thing is about someone's passion. You know, we think about stuff, and what speaks about us is our home is a reflection of who we are. Sure. You know, you've been to my place. Mm -hmm. You've seen my little leggy, you know, baby <laughs> sheep man cave. Very fun. You know, but I was like thinking, your home says so much about you, and thinking this is Barbara's home we've been brought into, we get to see this glimpse of. When we look at your character, what is he, when he's internalizing, getting this job in this mall, what's really going through his head? Oh God, I mean, I, I don't think that he, I, I, here's what I'll equate it to, is, is as an actor coming into a show like this, Something that's so overwhelming and you know what's going to happen, but you also have no idea what's going to happen. Um, I think that that's exactly how he feels. He knows that he's working, you know, uh, the minute that Sharon says in the show, you're working in, basically, essentially, she says you're working in Barbara Streisand's mall. And, um, and so he knows that going into the job, but he has no idea what to expect. And I think that that very much parallels as an actor, and I'm sure you can attest to that too. Oh, good. <laughs> knowing like, what this monumental task ahead of you is, but still not having any idea what to expect or how to feel about it. So I think that that's how Alex sort of internalizes his experience in the beginning. So think you're in someone's home, mm -hmm. you know, and this is a very personal place. Our homes where you invite people in, just like this show is about us coming into a home and sharing these moments with the folks on stage, you go into people's homes and they offer you things like, I don't know, like, stick to share Because, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, you have to have food in someone's home because, you know, you <laughs> have to. Because who doesn't want to share Kit Kat? I would love, Kat. let's split it. Okay. Because, you know, <laughs> you're in someone's home, you have to offer them beverages and snacks. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> 
when he first gets into this home, do you think he's more nervous about being a stranger in someone's place that he's never really met? Because you've been to those dinner parties, you're going, I don't know a soul here. But you're now in this place like, well, do I touch things? Can I touch this? There's plastic on the furniture. The boat's stopping by. <laughs> right. You know, honestly, I don't know that he ever has the expectation of ever meeting her. I think that he gets hired to work down there. I mean, Sharon tells him sometimes she likes to go down there, but she doesn't like to be alone. And so he's, it's always lingering in the back of his mind when he first starts that, okay, maybe there's a possibility. So then... The first time that he's working and he ever hears the door at the top of the spiral staircase open, he starts freaking out because he thinks, oh my god, this is it, it's her, and then it's someone else. Um, and so I don't know that he ever has the expectation of meeting her, really. And then he does, <laughs> and starts developing this weirdo relationship with her, you know, something that neither he nor the audience could ever anticipate, you know? And I think part of the show is about relationships because you're you're sharing your home. Being when you have people in your home, you're vulnerable. Yeah, this is your world. You're inviting people in, and he's got, and you have because it's this a magnificent thing. You have the voices of four or five people running through your head that we get to experience mm -hmm. in their homes. You have Barry, who's in your home. And then we have Sharon, who's almost like, okay, here's another one. Let's talk about those characters. Like, how do you guys keep them separate in your heads when you're jumping dialogue and you're speaking for them? How's that oh working? God, what do you think about that? Um, I kind of just think of the units that Don Westbrook, the director, mm -hmm. kind of broke it down into. It's it's broken down into uh, 19, 19 units. Okay. Um, so it's a 60 page script, but it's it's broken down into um, into the 19 units. And it's kind of just as you're going from one to the other, you just kind of have to think one step ahead. And it's, you know, I'm going into this unit and I'm going to meet this person and this person. And then you, you kind of just go from there. You just have to be really thinking really far ahead. Very, <laughs> very far ahead. You're, you're, never, you're never really present in the moment, but you are at the same time. I mean, it's so much self-analyzing and thinking during a show, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, why am I thinking so much? But then you're thinking, I need to stop thinking. <laughs> like, and it's a total mind trip, the whole show. And really finding the characters, their voices and physicalities was such a process of trial and error. I mean, I don't think that it, like, Sharon really came out until maybe two days before we opened, or something, something, it was extremely close to our opening, and it was just a process of play, and trial and error, and finding what works and what doesn't, you know? Because you move in and out of these things gracefully. Like, one minute, you're you, mm -hmm. but then you have this fun, and you're Sharon, and then you're Barbara, and then you're Barry, and everybody's got their own little things. You can just see these little nuances. And when you give their speeches, it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my God. It's, I'm looking at one person, but I'm hearing somebody else. So I think it's just amazing. Oh, well, I have to give credit where credit is due to Don Westbrook, our amazing, amazing director who helped guide this piece into something truly beautiful and I think relatable. I hope relatable. Um, and her, one of her biggest things was pacing, you know, pacing of each character, pacing of the whole show, just pace, tempo, and time in general was a huge, huge part of our rehearsal process. So I think so much of that fluidity that you're talking about, it really like, um, is an homage to Dawn's work on this show. She did a wonderful, wonderful job helping us discover that. And I think when you say it's relatable, we get these glimpses into, into celebrity. We have in our mind who we think these people are. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day we forget there are people that have hopes and dreams and aspirations. And they live in a whole different world, so to speak, than some of us. And they're getting to play out their fantasy. If this is their fantasy home. This is their whole piece. Um, if you had a fantasy home, what kind of house would it be, and where would it be? Oh my gosh, you go first. No. <laughs> He's like, no, I do not answer that question. I would like to take, you know, Barbara's house and take her <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, to be honest, I've never really given much stock into that sort of thing. I, what I'll say is one of the reasons I love this show so much is because of the script mm -hmm. and how well the script is written. And Alex, like, you can only approach Alex as yourself. He is a person who doesn't, who's never thought about that. He's never thought about what kind of a house he really lived in or what, um, what kind of a rug is on his floor until it comes up in conversation with Barbara. And then he starts analyzing that and thinking about that sort of thing. And, um, but until this experience, he was the kind of person who's just like, okay, I mean, I'll take it as it comes. And, and I love that about him because... Like I said, you can only approach him as yourself, and seeing that in writing, I was like, oh my god, this isn't a character, this is me, you know? And I'm sure, like, there are, that has to be true for oh, you, too. Yeah. How could it not be? <laughs> Absolutely. It, the writing is so relatable. Without giving too much away, Alex goes through almost like a change. Because she makes a comment about being real, being genuine, and caring. Mm-hmm. And I think about something that happens at the end of the show, and I'm thinking, how many of us have actually returned something that it wasn't quite right? It was, that's something that, um, that he never would have done before this experience. He would have taken it as it comes. Um, and it, what I love about the show, too, is, is the heart of it, which really is, which really says... Um, what is the price of things? What do things mean in our lives if they're not connected to something deeper than the exterior? And, um, and I think that his journey is really quite fun because he never thought of being fancy before or anything. He would have never sent something back. He would have never told anyone no in his entire life. And through his journey with her, he comes to learn, he comes to realize, like, these things really don't mean anything. But, at the same time, you know what? If, if I don't like it, why not? Exactly. Why not send it back? <laughs> it's not quite right. Right. Do you have, in your home, we all have our own little favorite thing, in your apartment, is there one thing that's like your favorite item or object that you have gotten that you that really was like, like a good memory or remember something attached to it? You're like, yes, this is... Or am I just that shallow going, oh my god. No, I don't okay. know. I mean, uh, <laughs> I have a wonderful bed right now. <laughs> that I'm you know. really grateful for. <laughs> yes, I love my bed. I guess it would okay. have to be my bed. I don't know. Oddly enough, there's a rug in my room. Um, Lucian, who is the production manager mm -hmm. and was also the sound designer for this show, um, we're dating, we live together, and there's a rug that's in our room that we had a really time a really hard time figuring out what we wanted. And it just happened to be the rug, which is a very strange, you know, coincidence that the show, that it's the rug that Alex Moore, you know, sends back. Spoiler. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, a, a rug in our room. It's this really nice, like, orange and cream colored rug that we are really proud of. Because it took a long time for us to figure out that that was the one that we wanted. <laughs> well, no, because our homes are a reflection of, of who we are. If you had to describe Alex's apartment before he goes to work for Barbara, how would you describe it? I, I mean, I think probably just your any day. He never thought about where anything really goes or... You know, I mean, his, his sheets are from Target. His rug is from Home Depot. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just, <coughs> excuse me, um... Like, everyday average. Yeah. Like everybody else has the same rug. Everybody has the same, you know, pinstripe. I think it's sheet. very, like, very beige. You know, nothing really special about it. It's just a place to be. There's a, there's a bed to sleep on, and he's grateful for that, and that's all that he cares about. You know? If you describe where you live now, how would you describe it? Is it bohemian chic? Is it... Early Americana. <laughs> is it? You know, it's this loft over on uh, Yeah. The two story studio with the Murphy bed. I don't know. Oh, right now it's Monument Ave. Yeah. Dude, that's great pretty viewers. suave. Yeah. You, you can see our trophies to second place. Yeah. <laughs> I had a great view of the bike race. I'll there say you that. There you go. Yeah. So, so you have a view of you. I did. 
It's very good VO. Yeah. Um, we're in the Carver neighborhood, so we're really close to VCU, close to Jackson Ward. Um, it's a very like classic um, row home, is what I think they call them. Um, but it's this nice two-story, like five-bedroom place where a lot of people live. <laughs> we have we rent out all the rooms, um, but it it's nice and eclectic because we all have different okay a different you know things that we like and. There are a ton of us in the house. Okay. <laughs> it's very bohemian. I would, yeah, I guess I We're on the 60s factory bohemian? Or? <laughs> <laughs> We're not that bohemian. <laughs> Lots of superstars. What do you want an audience to take away from this experience? Because this is an experience. This is more than just a show. Wow. You are drawn into this life and the warmth of this character and his sharing of his day in what kind of becomes his home, his second home. What do you want an audience to take away from this? Well, that's very cool, and I appreciate that, and thank you. Um, I, I mean, the, the, first and foremost, I want people to come and uh, grab a drink from the bar and have a good time. You know, that's the number one thing, just have a good time. Get away from your life and forget about everything, and welcome right. to this crazy story. <laughs> and um, and be and beyond that, I guess it would just be we're all people living our lives and trying to make the best of uh, of this of what we can. You know, um, that's really I think what the heart of uh, of the show is and what the real message is is that we're all just people. You know, superstars or not. We all share something in common. And I think that's really what the message of the show is. But aside from that, come and have a great time and have a laugh with me. And Luke. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't have said it better. Um, just that it's, it's an excellent show. It's an excellent script. Um, and have fun! <laughs> well, I mean, it is, it's a lot of fun. You laugh the entire time. Absolutely. <laughs> now, this show runs through October 31st. Uh, Halloween, yeah. So, you know, you've got still got time to see this amazing show. Tickets are available at rtrauma.org. You're going to be gone for how many, for a performance? Two days. Two days. And Luke's going to be performing. Yes, yeah. this coming Thursday and Friday, yeah, okay. and I can't wait to see him. He's <laughs> wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Wonderful. I mean, I love this show, and I am so proud of you. Thank you. Because I've watched you so like, since you first started here at Richmond, and I just loved every moment of this. So this is a fantastic show. You need to come out. You're going to come out, share a Kit Kat, <laughs> have a cocktail, kick back and join evening with Dan and Luke and Babs at the <laughs> Fire and Cellar here at Richmond Triangle Players. You never know where I'll turn up next, so you can go. See you next time.